Good morning, soldiers. This is Sergeant Merrill, and today we're going to be doing another episode of Sergeant's Time, where, for better or worse, I'm looking at your questions and giving you my advice. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. <laughs> There's no easy way to say that to another dude. It's like, hey, man, how's it going? Happy Valentine's Day. I mean, what do, you, what do you say back to that? You know, you should try it today. You should walk up to a dude and just say, hey, man, happy Valentine's Day. And see what he says back. Just don't do it to a guy that's, like, a lot bigger than you. This is my recommendation. But anyway, guys, this is Sergeant's Time. If you're new to this series, I uh, haven't done one in a while. And it's just where I'm taking a look at your questions and comments uh, in the comment section from the last Sergeant's Time video. And I'm just giving you my advice and my thoughts on it. As far as the gameplay going on here in the background, uh, you guessed it. Next video is probably going to be on the KSG. I'm doing some research on it, and it is silenced. I will talk about how much I enjoy the silenced KSG uh, once I do the video for that. But in the meantime, you get to enjoy some pretty competitive gameplay. I jumped into uh, this game and actually ended up uh, partying up with some subscribers, and we had a really good time. You know, it was a nice competitive game. But to go ahead and jump into the first highly upvoted question from the last video, uh, it's from Matty Deeks. And he said, as a British person, what are your views on the British military? And then he always talks about this, this just debate that always happens between stupid Americans and stupid Britons uh, about who saved who during the world wars. And I hate seeing this conversation. It usually ends up pissing me off and I just end up ignoring it. Uh, because number one, it comes from people who have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, never served in any military force in their life or have any intention to. And they're trying to take credit for the actions of people who who did do those things. So when they start using words like, we did this, and we did that, we accomplished this, we were able to do that, I just, I, I look at it and I'm like, what, we? Are you in the military? Did, did you serve 100 years ago that I didn't know about? Like, why, why are you using that word, we? Be proud of what your ancestors have done, but don't sit there and try and take credit for it unless you're actively participating in the same type of effort today. But to answer the fundamental question here, which is, what are my views on the Br British military? They're positive. They're, they're, they're respectable. Because I have that same type of respect for anybody who chooses to voluntarily serve their country's military. And I'm just not one of those people who believe in this whole country against country, which one is better kind of concept. You know, every country is a little different, but guys, I've traveled, okay? And the, the fundam fundamental concept of, of human spirit and and defending your comrades and your friends and your family remains the same no matter what country you're in. You're going to fight with the same amount of passion, the same amount of respect, if you ask me. So uh, I'm not into this whole UK versus Britain versus any other country kind of thing. And I certainly don't expect or even want every country to be like America. I mean, that certainly take the fun out of traveling, don't you think? But we'll go ahead and move into our next question. And uh, this was a good one. It's from Thunderbird Strike 29 and he says, How do you tell your parents you want to join the military? And I'm guessing this is coming from a younger younger subscriber. Um, you know, younger people worry about this kind of thing. Uh, that they, they, they want their parents to support their decision. And a lot of people have misconceptions about the military, and that includes parents. And that could be from, I don't know, you know, from, from Hollywood portraying it as a very violent uh, place to be. Uh, or maybe it was a family member that just had a really bad experience with the military. Some parents just don't like the concept. Uh, and my suggestion for you is to arm yourself with information. Because uh, I think if you had all the information about the military, you can't sit there and say that it's a bad idea given certain circumstances. I mean, if you have a full ride to college and you're good to go in that department, I don't really see the need to join the military. But if you just have a like a desire to serve your country and to, you know, participate in that sort of thing, which I can understand and connect with. But if you arm yourself with the correct information, it will put a parent's mind at ease. You know, uh, let them know that there's 212 jobs in the army. At least that's how many there were when I was in. There's probably a lot more now. And only a handful of them are combat related. So if you're not going for the infantry, you got to let them know. Be like, look, I'm, I'm not going to be in harm's way on a regular basis. You know, I could go my entire uh, career without seeing combat especially now since all the wars are winding down. So put their mind at ease. Arm yourself with all the information you'll need to answer any questions they might have. And I'm telling you, the whole process will be a lot easier. Next question is from Billy C 500 and he says, Being a gamer yourself, do you plan on introducing your kids to gaming? 
And then he says, if you do make a whole video about being a parent and how that has changed your gaming habits, this might work better with that video. And I've actually touched on this topic before in my 30K Q&A. Uh, somebody talked about how, how has gaming changed now that I'm a father. And if you don't know, I'm a father of two. Uh, both are pretty young. Uh, my daughter's not even two yet. <laughs> you can you can hear me cursing in the background. Oh man, I hate it when you're just you're so close to killing that guy on the bomb, and then somebody comes from behind. And I'm like, no. <laughs> but my daughter's not even two yet, and my we just had my my son a month ago. So uh, I'm a very busy father. But yes, I do plan on introducing my kids to gaming. I think it's advantageous that I'm a gamer myself because I have many lessons learned on this topic. So I know from personal experience. Uh, how gaming can go on both ends, ends of the spectrum. I, I know how it can be an extremely healthy habit. You know, how it can be a, a great social experience, a, a great way to unwind after a long day and to, to enjoy yourself, uh, to escape a little bit, you know, to play a good RPG and get into a different world. And I just know how enjoyable and how healthy I think gaming can be, but I also know how unhealthy gaming can be because I've been there. I've been there with, uh, with certain games, uh, especially MMOs. Um, how they can demand more and more of your time and it just seems like more is just never enough. Like there's just not enough time in the world to give what the game demands of you. Uh, just off the top of my head, I remember playing uh, Lineage 2 in Korea. And, and this was uh, an, an MMO that came out before World of Warcraft. And this game just, there wasn't enough time in the world to, to give to this, to this game. And I still tried to give it. And I was in the military at the time, but all of my off-duty time for a while went to this game. I won't say a couple months. I just, man, I went off the grid and I just played Lineage 2. Uh, and after a while, I just kind of looked at myself and I looked at the past couple months and I'm like, you know, as a person, as a human being, what have I accomplished in the past couple months? And when the answer is absolutely nothing but, you know, pushing forward a, a, a digital character, you got to ask yourself, well, why am I doing this? And, and so there's this line that I'm going to know when I teach my kids about gaming. When, when they are playing games, I'm, I'm going to see the line and I'm going to know when they're starting to cross it. And you can generally tell when someone's starting to cross that line when they start to put uh, more effort and more passion and more thought into their gaming than they are their own real life. You know what I'm saying? Like you should have real life goals and real life hobbies and real life careers that you put just as much passion and thought and effort into. And when you start to put more into the gaming than you are your own life, uh, that's an issue. That means it's becoming much more of an unhealthy escape from reality and less of just a social fun thing that you're doing. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't put passion and thought and effort into gaming. You should just make sure that you're not putting more into gaming than your own real life. It's okay to put the same amount. You know, I think I put the same amount of passion into gaming as I, as I do my, my other interests in life. Uh, but that just means you're a passionate person that, and that carries over into your hobbies. That's fine. So to answer the question more directly, yes, I, I do plan on int introducing my kids to gaming because I don't think there's anything wrong with it. In fact, I think it can be a very healthy hobby. Uh, but I also realize that it can also be an unhealthy hobby. Uh, so I do plan on introducing them to gaming, but I do want to be careful about it. But moving on to our next question, it's from Raphael BR95. He says, Sarge, I have a couple questions. First, would medical allergies disqualify me from joining the Army? And second, what are the U.S. Army enlistment bonuses and how do they work? So for the first question, it's going to depend on what you're allergic to. I mean, if, if we're just talking about like mountain cedar, you know, like if you're allergic to hay, uh, I don't think we're going to have much of a problem. In fact, you know, we had some people that in basic training that were allergic to wool, and that's what the military uses for all their linen. So that was a problem for them, but they didn't kick them out. Uh, but we are dealing with a time now in which most of the wars for the United States are winding down. Uh, so the military and the army just, they tend to get much more picky during times like this. So something like that might disqualify you at the moment. Uh, it's just something you're going to have to see with your recruiter. Uh, so if it's something less severe, like I said, it, it, just like an air allergy where it gives you the sniffles, uh, I don't think it's going to disqualify you. If we're talking something like peanuts or, you know, if you have a severe food allergy that could put you in a coma, that might disqualify you because they can't necessarily control... Uh, those sort of things as a majority for their food. But then again, I don't know. I remember this time in, in PLDC, which is a primary leadership development course. It's a, it's a leadership course that you have to go through to be an NCO. And we had this girl that was allergic to ants. Can you believe that? You know, if she got bit by an ant, she would like go into a coma if you didn't give her her EpiPen. 
<laughs> I swear to God, like four or five times, uh, we had to stick that girl with the EpiPen because she got bit by an ant in the field. And it was like, how do you, how do you not get bit by ants when you're in the field? Like, I, like how, how are you in the military right now? But they kept her in. So, you know, I got no idea. It's just going to depend. Ask your recruiter, and uh, your recruiter is not going to sit there and disqualify you. He's going to tell you some of the sneaky, sneaky ways you can get in. Because if you find out that you're allergic after joining, well, then pff, now it's not your fault. Now it's the military's responsibility to take care of you. Now, as far as what bonuses you get and how much money you get for, for joining certain jobs in the military, I do not pay attention to that crap, man. But to let you know, uh, the Army gives bonuses, and the military in general gives bonuses to certain jobs that they really need. Uh, usually the infantry has a bonus that goes with it. It's usually somewhere around, you know, 10 to 15 grand. I remember when I was joining, they were giving out like a 15 to 20 grand bonus if you joined a combat MOS. Uh, and the reason I wouldn't pay attention to that is because you know, when you join in the military, unless you're going to go career, that money in the long run means nothing. It's your experience that you receive in the military is going to be what really means something. You're on the job training, if you will. It's not going to be the money that you receive in the beginning. You don't even get it all at once. You kind of get it over time. Um, so I would worry less about what bonuses are available unless you really need the money and worry about more about, you know, what you want to do in life and, and what training the military has to offer that you couldn't previously have access to. Now, our gameplay here is winding down. As you can see, uh, there, there's a lot to enjoy about the Silence KSG. I can't wait to come out with a video on that uh, and tell you guys everything that I've learned about this thing because uh, it has required some research. As much as I like Keltec, uh, I have not dealt with their shotgun before. Uh, so it was very interesting researching this weapon, both in-game and out-of-game. Uh, and I also want to open up the comment section on this video to your questions and uh, anything that you would like me to address. And if you see something that someone else has already asked, go ahead and upvote it. It helps me assign priority to the three to 500 responses that I get on this video. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you learned something else about me. Hope my advice has helped you in some way, <laughs> as good or bad as it may be. But that's all I have for this video, guys. This is Sergeant Merrill out here. Thank you.